Next time you're at the thrift store, head to the children's section and look for some wooden building blocks. I'm gonna show you how you can turn these into really cute shelf sitters. And these are also some of my best selling items. I gave these a light sanding with some 120 grit sandpaper and then I painted them with my homemade white chalk paint. And I just did the face of each of these wooden blocks. If you are a reseller, this is a fantastic way to get all kinds of these little blocks that you can turn into shelf sitters and sell and make a profit. After the chalk paint had dried, I went back in with that sandpaper again and just made them a little bit rustic. I have a sheet of words in my Etsy store that is going to be fantastic for this project. I sized them up as best I could because some of the blocks are all different random lengths, but these are gonna work really great to do my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method on these blocks. Twist here though, I'm not using Mod Podge because I couldn't find any at my local craft store, but they had this other brand that's the exact same as Mod Podge and it works just as well. I've printed off these graphics on my laser printer, making sure to reverse the text. If you grab these out of my Etsy store, they're already reversed, so you don't need to worry about that applied the product and then centered it on the building block and got all the bubbles and wrinkles out of it. And then we're just gonna set them aside and we're gonna let them dry until tomorrow. So next time you are at the thrift store, head right to the toy section and see if you can find a bag of these building blocks. I see them all the time. I always grab them and I always put these together because like I said before, these are some of my best sellers and I can bulk put these together and do them really quickly. It's the next day. I let them sit overnight. We're now going to take a damp rag with a little bit of water and we're going to wet that paper until the graphic sh starts to show through and then just gently rub off the paper and the graphic is going to stay on that chalk paint underneath creating the cutest little sign. I've got this one all done and now we're ready to put on a top coat and I like using my water-based polyacrylic sealer. I've got a matte finish here. You can pick out the finish that you like for your signs and I'm just gonna put a light coat on this and set it aside and let it dry. We're gonna work away at all of the others and you're not gonna believe how cute these are. Always find wooden candlesticks and wooden bowls at the thrift store. And I'm gonna show you how we can incorporate these two together into a beautiful piece of home decor. We're gonna use some E6000 and we're going to put a little bit around the rim of that candle. Now we're going to flip the bowl upside down and center that candlestick right in the middle of that bowl. Then we're gonna set it aside, let it dry until tomorrow. Now, honestly, this looks beautiful just the way it is. I don't even need to paint it, but it was really scratched up and dinged. It's hard to tell on the camera here, but it, they were both in pretty rough shape. So I got out my beeswax stick and I'm just rubbing it everywhere where this would have naturally aged if it was really old and then applying it all over the bowl in the candlestick. And then I'm going in with my black homemade chalk paint and I'm going to give one good coat over the entire piece. I want this really chippy and rustic looking, so I'm actually doing two techniques to achieve that look. I put on the beeswax that you saw in the beginning, and now I'm putting on some Vaseline. Same thing, I'm just kind of putting it here and there, wherever it would have na naturally aged. And then we're going to get the wood color showing through and the black color showing through when we're finished and we distress this. I got out my white homemade chalk paint and I gave a coat over the entire piece. If you have not made your own chalk paint, you should give this recipe a try. I'll put the link for my favorite recipe down below in the description. It's a really affordable uh, alternative to buying store-bought chalk paint. Now this is dry completely and I'm going in with a sanding block. This is an 80 grit sanding block and we're just gonna knock down the Vaseline and the wax and it's gonna expose those two colors underneath giving this a really rustic feel. Now again, you can stop at this step, but I find in my area, when I put a little graphic on my projects, even if it's just one simple word, they seem to sell better. So I'm gonna put the word grateful on the middle of this bowl 
I've got some Mod Podge now. We've printed this off on a laser printer, making sure to reverse the text. And we're spreading that Mod Podge across that whole piece of paper. I got a little bit messy on this one. And we're gonna center it in the, right in the middle of that bowl. We're gonna press out any bubbles or wrinkles, making sure that it's nice and smooth. And then we're gonna set it aside and let it dry completely. It's the next day, we have a little dish of water and I'm just gonna dampen that paper until you can start to see the graphics show through. And then we're gonna rub off the paper. This is a really easy graphic to rub off. There's not very much paper, it's just a small word, but it really looks cute in the bottom of this bowl. I have some live videos where I did this technique in real time and it really is helpful to watch those if you're trying to master this technique. I'll put a link to some of those down below in the description. Now we're ready to seal this all up. I'm using my polyacrylic sealer, matte finish, and we're just going to apply it all over the bowl and the candlestick holder. These make excellent gifts and they're really affordable and you can always find these at the thrift store. So give this project a try. And here's some other bowls that I've done, different colors, different quotes, and I think they're just gorgeous. You can never have too many wooden bowls. This was a fun upcycle. I found a candlestick and a glass bowl. We're gonna incorporate these two together. I took the wooden candlestick outside and I gave it a coat of this beautiful blue spray paint. Once it was dry, I went in with my 80 grit sandpaper and I sanded that whole candlestick holder. And now we're gonna get out that E6000 and we're just going to put it around the rim and then we're going to place that glass bowl on top of it. Now you can also use a little bit of hot glue if you are in a hurry and you want it to stay put and I don't find that it makes a difference with the E6000 not working and you can move it around a little bit and not have to worry about it. But I left mine overnight and now I'm just filling up with a little bit of dirt and I had some succulents and I'm just gonna add the succulents in that little dish, add a few little rocks and we have made a DIY terrarium with stuff that I have found at the thrift store that was a couple of dollars to put together. And again, this would make a fantastic gift for someone. Now we're back to those words. I printed this off on my laser printer, again, on regular computer paper. This is just like Mod Podge. I got it at Michael's. It's actually the DecoArt brand. And I sized it to fit the front of that candle holder. And we're going to do that transfer method, letting it sit for 24 hours and then rubbing the paper off. Do you still have a banana hanger in your kitchen and it's looking really dated? If you do, you might wanna try this DIY. I found this one at the thrift store. It looks like it actually was homemade and I'm going to give it a coat of black homemade chalk paint. It actually took two coats of that black chalk paint and once it was dry, I went in with some 80 grit sandpaper and I gave it a really good sanding to give it that rustic look. I pulled a glass jar out of my recycling bin and I painted it with my chalk paint. I have a really great technique to paint glass and it won't chip at all. I'll put the link to that down below in the description. Now where I'm going to add a graphic onto this glass jar, I've printed off again, just like the other projects on regular computer paper with my laser printer. You can also do this with an inkjet printer. It is a bit more tricky and the transfer is a li little bit more faded. I have a video where I compared the two together. Again, down in the description, I'll put that video. If you only have an inkjet, you can check that out. Putting on my decoupage mat from DecoArt, which is the exact same as Mod Podge, centering it on that glass jar and getting all the bubbles and wrinkles out of it, setting it aside and letting it dry for 24 hours. And did you know that you can also do graphic transfers with polycrylic sealer? I did a comparison video using Mod Podge and polycrylic and it was 
pretty cool to see how well both worked. I'll put that down below in the description too and you can check that out. Let's add a hanger on the glass jar. I'm just using some twine and my hot glue gun and I'm just gonna attach it. So we can hang this from that banana hanger. Now let's seal everything up with this polycrylic sealer. And by adding the polycrylic sealer, it allows you to use a damp rag and wipe these down. There, it doesn't make it waterproof, but it makes it water resistant. And I had this faux succulent in my stash and it fit perfectly right into that glass jar. And we're now gonna take that piece of twine and hang it from the banana hanger. And how cute of an upcycle is this? And it looks fabulous in my kitchen. Again, another great gift idea on a budget that you can find easily at the thrift store or in your recycling bin. Lamps are something that we always see at the thrift store and they're fantastic to upcycle and there's so many different ways to do it. This one's really dated. It's going to need a paint job and I'm gonna do a little bit of work on the shade also. We're gonna put a fringe on this lampshade. I picked up this macrame cord on Amazon. I'll put the link to that down below in the description. And you can just watch and see how I create this fringe. It's really easy to do. And it's better than me talking through it and trying to explain where you can just watch visually. Now have the fringe done. It's really easy to put together simple macrame knots and it's going to go around the width of the lampshade. The only thing that we have to do now is we're gonna unravel all of these tassels. Magic of video, it's all finished. So now what I'd like to do is I'm gonna take a comb and I'm gonna comb out all of these tassels so they're nice and fluffy and they don't look like they've just been unraveled. You need a really sharp pair of scissors and we're just gonna trim this all along the edge so it's nice and straight. And now you can see how it's gonna fit along that lampshade and it's really going to make it look high end. I'm gonna use my glue gun and we're just gonna glue this tassel fringe on the bottom of the lampshade. And you don't have to use macrame cord to make a fringe like this. You can also use yarn. So if you have a stash in your craft room of beautiful colors, give a try doing this process, making a fringe with some of your yarn. Okay, we have that all finished. It does take a little bit of time, but it's certainly worth the effort. Now let's get working on the base of this lamp. The blue color of this lamp is really dated 
I picked this up for $10.99, but it was 50% off that day. So I'm just gonna really clean it up with an alcohol wipe, make sure there's no grease or residue on it, and then tape off the cord and the top of that light socket and get painting. I mixed together some of my homemade sand paint. I love the texture that this paint makes. I have a full tutorial on how to make this recipe. I'll put the link to that down below in the description. And you don't need to prep with this sand paint. You can just paint right on your project because it's a chalk paint base. You don't have to use white paint. You can use any color paint to create texture on your DIY projects. Once it's completely dry, I'm gonna take my sanding block and I'm going to just lightly sand it and anywhere where there's a little grain of sand, I'm gonna knock the paint off the top of it so it gives it that speckled kind of brown look, textured look that looks like an old piece of ceramic. This is one of my favorite painting techniques and I use it a lot in my DIY projects. And now we're gonna seal it up again with that polycrylic sealer. So the paint is sealed really nice and if you ever want to wipe it down with a damp rag or dust it, you'll be able to without affecting the paint finish underneath. Also make sure that you're buying a product that is water-based. If you're using an oil-based sealer as a top coat, it's going to yellow over time on you and you don't want that to happen. And what do you think? I absolutely love it. The sand paint was the perfect choice, but the fringe, finished it off so it really gives it that modern feel. Next time you're at the thrift store, look for a lamp to upcycle. This next DIY is a whole bunch of little bits and pieces that I picked up at yard sales. This old saucepan is going to be turned into a beautiful tiered tray. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn up that handle into a C shape so it looks like it's attached to the pot instead of looking just like a saucepan. So I went rooting through my stash and this is what I'm gonna use for this project. An old vintage bunt pan, a spindle, some porcelain knobs, and that saucepan. We're gonna get out the trusty E6000 and we're gonna put this all together. I'm gonna take the bunk pan, sorry, I'm out of frame a little bit here, and I'm gonna put the E6000 on the top of that bunt pan, and then we're gonna place it right in the middle of that vintage saucepan, making sure that it's right where we want it, and then we're going to set it aside and let it dry completely. I wasn't in a rush with this project, so I left this until the next day before I went on to the next step. It's the next day. Now we're gonna use those porcelain knobs as feet on the bottom of the bunt pan. Using that E6000 again, we are going to place one in each corner of that bunt pan so it acts like four feet on the bottom. I wanted these to stay put, so I used a little bit of painter's tape to hold them in place. And again, I wasn't in a hurry, so I left these till the next day until they were really dry. And now we're starting to get that resemblance of a tiered tray. And the spindle, I wanted to put in the top saucepan, put some E6000 on the bottom of it, and then put some painter's tape to hold it straight up. And this is what I created. I put in some faux flowers, some daisies in the top, a vintage doily, and a couple of my shelf sitters that I did with that Mod Podge transfer technique. And I think this is absolutely adorable. A great way to upcycle that old kitchenware that most people would probably just overlook. And I think this is gonna look fantastic in a farmhouse kitchen. I'm sure you've all been to the thrift store and seen these wooden items that have that orange hue and just look really dated. I picked up these candlesticks and I'm gonna show you how you can transform them and make them look modern again. These were each 50 cents a piece, an amazing steal, but let's upcycle these. I'm gonna scuff sand these with a sanding block. We don't need to really take it down that much, but just give it something so we can get that top layer of that orange tinted stain off. 
Now by sanding these, it does work pretty well for bringing these back to life and making them look like they're not screaming 80s, as you can see here. But I'm gonna show you how you can bleach wood and even bring it up to an even more nicer, modern looking piece that you would find at a big box store. This is just some bleach and some water and we're just going to spray it on this candlestick and then let it sit. This works really well in a good ventilated area because it's bleach, so you don't wanna be doing it right in your house and having that bleach smell go all the way through. I'm doing this out in my shed, the door is wide open, and it's going to prevent it from being really stinky. You're going to spray it, let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes and then rinse it really well with water. And then if you haven't got the desired color, you can keep applying that bleach and water mixture until you get what you're looking for. So here is the finished candlestick. And what we're going to do now is we're gonna seal it up with some polycrylic sealer and that will allow us to dust it or to have it more durable if we're gonna have it in our home. And here is our candlestick upcycle. I love the color of this. It's gotten rid of that orangey brown tint and it's much more pleasing being that bleached color. I love them. You're gonna always find these at the thrift store, so give this technique a try. Okay, we're ready to start this project. I'm not sure about the frame. I might add another color on top. Once I get it all finished and I do my dried flowers and see what kind of colors pull out, I might put another coat on this, but for now I'm just gonna set that aside and we're gonna work on the graphics on this. So this was the inside of the frame. It's just the, uh, the backer and what I did was I put one coat of black chalk paint and then two coats of white chalk paint and we're ready to put the graphic on. I made my graphics and then I've printed them off on my laser jet printer and you have to make sure that you reverse your text. I just printed this off just to show you the quote that I made. And in a field of roses, she is a wildflower. And I thought that was appropriate when I'm gonna add all my dried flowers all along the bottom. And I printed it off on my laser jet printer, reverse the text, and I sized it to the size that I wanted for this piece of wood and we're all ready to put it on with the Mod Podge. I'm just gonna cut it down to size so it fits better on the piece of wood. And I have a tutorial where I show you how I do my graphics and print them off on my Word program and reverse the text. I'll put a link up above here and down below in the description. So if you're unsure how to do that, you can go back and you can check that out. You're just gonna put a light coat over the whole graphic and then put it on the piece of wood and let it set overnight. And then when it's finished, you're going to take a damp rag and then rub off the graphics. Okay, I have the graphics all on. I'm just rubbing out any wrinkles or bubbles. It's all good. I'm just gonna set this aside, let it dry thoroughly. I usually lose it, leave it overnight and then we'll be ready to rub the paper off and we'll have a beautiful graphic. Okay, this is completely dry. And now we're gonna take a little damp rag and we're just going to dampen the paper just until you start to see the graphic show through. And I like to do it in sections. So I'm gonna do this section first and work away at it and you just rub it until all the paper comes off. And you just kind of go gently and just get the feel for it. And uh, it takes a little bit of a knack and a little bit of patience, but it works perfect. And as you can see, as you work away, all that paper rubs off and then the graphic is left on your project. I have the graphics all done and now we're ready to use the dried flowers that I pressed um, from my garden and some wildflowers that I found out and around my house. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of lay them out, see how I like them and then I'm going to Mod Podge them onto my piece of wood. 
So it'll all be incorporated into one and frame will then go on when it's all finished. So I'm just gonna work away on these dried flowers and see how I like them. I have them kind of set where I think I want to put them. So I'm just gonna take my time and just Mod Podge them onto that board and I'll probably fiddle with it a bit, but I am loving the way that it's gonna look and all the colors of those flowers. I have this set up so I have the base of uh, the dried flowers of how I want them. I'm using my Mod Podge mat and there's not really a real special technique to this. You just want to, now these are really brittle from when I dry them. I'm gonna put a little bit on the back just gently because you don't want to break any leaves off. Just kind of pat it on and then flip it over and kind of just place it where you want it. And then just gently just take your paintbrush and just add the Mod Podge. Make sure you have a real good coat on it so it's going to stay put. And then we're just going to just do section by section and layer it on. After seeing all the colors of the dried flowers come together, I think I want to make a little pop of color on the frame. So I am going to use my baby wipes and I've got some pink acrylic paint and I'm just going to dry brush just on top of it because then I'll have like all three of these colors popping through. I'm gonna have some pink, I'm gonna have some black, I'm gonna have some gray. And I think that'll really complement the uh, wildflowers and the pressed flowers that I have on the picture. So I'm gonna work away at that. And I think that was a really good idea to add a little splash of pink to the frame. I think it's gonna look really good with all those dried flowers in that graphic. And I'm ready to put this into the back of the frame. It's all dry. Loving the pink. That was uh, an amazing choice to do that. So I'm just gonna put this in and then use my uh, hot glue gun just to uh, secure it back into the frame. I have a collection of some dried flowers, some faux flowers, and I think I'm just gonna nestle them in between. It'll give it kind of more of a 3D look, and it might brighten it up a little bit because I find some of the dried flowers, when I dried them, they kind of went a little bit darker. That's why I added a little bit of the acrylic paint to make the colors pop a bit. And I think this will finish it off really well. I'm just gonna use a hot glue from my hot glue gun and just kind of place them where I think it's gonna look the best. And all finished and that little splash of those artificial and faux flowers finished it off beautiful and I love it. It's so whimsical and so bright and I think it would look perfect in a little girl's room. vintage cutting board. It's probably from the 90s. It needs a refresh. I'm going to give it a coat of flat white spray paint first to start it off. 
the spray paint's all dry. And now I'm gonna put a coat of my homemade chalk paint on top of that. I'm ready to put the graphics on my cutting board. This is the one that I'm going to do. I made this one. I think it's really great for the kitchen or for a baker. I've put it into my Word program, reversed it, printed it off on my laser jet printer on regular computer paper, and I'm just gonna place it right on my cutting board with some Mod Podge mat. Now this is all ready, it's sat overnight for 24 hours. I'm just gonna wet it with a wet rag and then rub off the paper and I'll be left with fantastic graphics. And this is all finished and ready to seal with a polyacrylic sealer. All finished and I love the way it turned out. Add a little bit of jute twine to the top. I'm loving this graphic and I think it's way better than the before. I'm going to work away on this ornate tray. I love the details in it, but I think I'm going to be able to make these details pop a little bit more. I'm going to use some wax. It's just an old pillar candle, and I'm just going to go along the edges a little bit so when I put the paint on, it won't adhere to wherever there's some wax. I'm going to put on a coat of acrylic metallic paint. This one is in spun gold. I've got two coats of gold on this and the candle wax underneath it. And I'm gonna put another coat of the candle wax on top of this gold before I put on my last coat. Okay, and now I've got some baking soda paint mixed up and I'm just gonna put a coat all over it. Just kind of slop it on. This is kind of a watery mixture of the paint, but that's okay. I didn't want it to be on thick. I wanted it to go on really thin because I'm trying to get a really aged kind of look on this tray. Everything is completely dry. I'm gonna take my sanding block and just give it a light sanding and anywhere that there was wax, that paint is gonna come off and it leaves a fantastic rustic look. And I'm bringing up that gold and that black. Okay, I have this all finished and distressed and I'm gonna do a fun technique with this. I'm gonna make these raised edges kind of look antique and rusty and I'm going to do it with cinnamon and Mod Podge. Now I just put a little bit of the cinnamon in just a plastic dish and I've got Mod Podge mat. You can also use school glue, that works fine too. Um, and I'm just gonna take a little paintbrush and just kind of rub it along wherever there's high spots. I want that Mod Podge just to stick on those places. I don't want it to be all over the whole project. So I'm just kind of, just lightly, just kind of brushing it on. I want it to give it a rusty antique look. I'm gonna put some in the corners here and here. And then before it dries, you don't want it to dry because the cinnamon won't stick to it. I'm gonna sprinkle the, the cinnamon on it and it's gonna give it a really neat aged look. I'm just gonna get some underneath here. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take a little pinch and just sprinkle it all over. I got all the cinnamon all sprinkled on and now I'm just gonna let it sit and dry. It's completely dry and I'm just gonna take an old paintbrush and just kind of wipe away any of that, that that's still laying on top and it leaves it looking nice and old and rusty. Added a little bit more Mod Podge and cinnamon. I wanted it to look a little bit more rusty and I'm really happy with the way that it's turned out now. And now I'm gonna put a graphic in the middle. This is the graphic that I'm gonna use, Smile, Sparkle, Shine. This is just printed off on my laser jet printer. If you've been following along, you know that I love my reverse Mod Podge transfer technique. That's what I'm gonna do on this. And I'm just gonna 
cut this out to fit my project and then use my Mod Podge mat to uh, place it on the tray. My tray is all dry, it's sat overnight, and now I'm ready to rub the graphic off on it. And this is all ready to seal with a polyacrylic sealer. And if you haven't tried that little trick to use cinnamon to make it look like it's rusty and old, give it a try because it works perfect. I'm going to put on a coat of flat white spray paint. The spray paint is all dry on this little cutie and I'm going to put a coat of my white chalk paint over the whole thing now. My little toothpick holder is all dry painted and I'm going to put a little graphic on it. I love this one and I've made a little one to go on the little circle and I'm just going to cut it out and apply it using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer. The graphic has sat overnight, it's completely dry, and now we're gonna rub off the paper. Graphic's all ready, now I'm gonna seal it with some polyacrylic sealer. I got this candle at a thrift store, um, and this is an old saucepan that I don't use very much. I'm gonna melt it down, and then I'm gonna reuse the wick to put it in that little jug, that little ceramic jug, and then pour the wax over top of it, and I'll have a brand new candle to reuse. I'm just gonna take this skewer and just break it in half so it's a little bit easier to work with. And then I have saved the wick out of that other candle that I melted down. And I'm just gonna take some masking tape and just attach it to that skewer so it stays put and then center it over that little vase. I've got that little wick secured right in the center with that little skewer and a little bit of masking tape. And now we're ready to pour in the wax. Love this upcycle. I think it's way cuter as a candle than it was as a toothpick holder. This has got a really shiny, glossy finish. So I'm gonna put a coat of the Bin Primer on top of it so I can make sure that all of my paint is gonna stick really well. The primer's all dry, and now I'm gonna put a couple coats of this flat white on the Kleenex box. Everything's all dry and I'm going to put one of my homemade napkins on this Kleenex box. I'm gonna decoupage it on. If you haven't seen this tutorial on how to custom make your own napkins to decoupage, I'll put a link down below in the description and you can check it out. It's a really simple process and it decoupages on so nice and smooth without any wrinkles the way that I do it with the water method. And what you do is you just take this napkin and you can see I've printed my graphics right on it and I have a plastic sleeve that I'm placing the graphic facing down and I'm just going to wet the edges with a stiff brush just to make the edges of the napkin kind of ragged so it blends in better when you put it on your project. I'm just gonna dampen that napkin, get all the wrinkles out, and then place it on the project on top of some Mod Podge. This is all dry, and I'm going to give it a coat of polyacrylic sealer. Next time you're out thrifting, I'll bet you you'll be looking for Kleenex holders. Isn't this adorable and so easy to upcycle? And the heart on the back really dated it, so I took the heart off and I wanted to put just a plain piece of wood on the backing to replace where that heart was. Just took a couple finishing nails and tacked it in place and it held it firmly and now it is not dated at all. I took some of my homemade stain as the first coat and then I dabbed on some Vaseline. I'm gonna try to make a real kind of farmhouse feel shelf with this, lots of rustic chippy paint happening. After everything was dry, I went over it with my homemade uh, white chalk paint, gave it a really good coat and when that was all finished then i took it outside and i gave it a really good sanding to make it nice and rustic and chippy and i'm going to do my mod podge reverse graphic transfer on this 
these graphics I've designed myself and I'm going to put them right on that piece of wood that I put on where that heart was. I think it looks fantastic. I let it dry for about 24 hours and then I rub the paper off. This is the end result. And if you like any of these graphics that I've made, I'll put the links down below. They're in my Etsy store. Now that heart that I took out of the middle of that shelf, let's upcycle it. I really banged it up with a hammer, made it really rustic, added on some candle wax, started layering my paint, put on a brown paint, some more candle wax, and then a nice blue turquoise color, and then candle wax, and then my last coat, I put on some of my white chalk paint. And when you sand it, everywhere where there was that wax, it's going to chip off and leave those colors from underneath. Again, I'm doing my Mod Podge reverse graphic. I printed off the graphics, let them dry for 24 hours, rubbed off the paper. And how cute is this? This tool painted key holder. It had a few knots that were leaching through the wood and the paint. So I sanded it all down and then I wanted to seal it with some primer. Otherwise those knots would just keep coming through. Once the primer was dry, I took my white chalk paint, gave it a coat of paint, took it outside and gave it a sanding. And then I'm gonna do, my, again, my Mod Podge reverse graphics. And I just printed off the word keys. I thought that was nice and simple and would work great for this little key rack. Put on the Mod Podge and then pressed all the bubbles and wrinkles out, set it aside for 24 hours. And then the next day I came back and I rubbed off the paper and here's the end result. Next project is a glass plate that I picked up at the thrift store. I think it might have been 50 cents, 75 cents, but I wanted to paint it white. And if you really want your paint to stick, put a coat of primer on first. I let the primer dry really well, and then I put a couple coats of my homemade chalk paint on it. After everything had really dried, I put on my Mod Podge graphics. This is completely dry. I wanted to leave the back just glass and I dampened my graphics, rubbed off the paper and it turned out beautiful. Was this little glass plate. I actually think I found out afterwards that it might've been off of a butter dish. I spray painted it with some matte black spray paint. When that was dry, I went over it with some white chalk paint. I always like to layer my colors. So if I sand it down, the black will peek through. And then I put on a second coat and then I took the edge of my scissors and I just scraped off those couple top layers of that white chalk paint so the black would peek through and it gave it a really chippy rustic look. I sized up and printed off on my laser jet printer the word sparkle. I thought this would make a really cute little trinket dish. Use my Mod Podge mat to apply it onto the dish. I let it sit for 24 hours, then rubbed off the paper and the graphics were left on that cute little dish. I thought it would be perfect for earrings or necklace to put in the bedroom. I always find these little pieces of glassware really cheap too. So if you just use your imagination and you just can kind of create some little pieces with it, they're so original and they're so beautiful. I left the back just plain glass and then I sealed it all up with some polyacrylic sealer. It is this little ceramic container that had milk on it. I didn't really care for the colors of it. Took it outside, gave it a spray paint of my matte black. And then when that was all dry, I gave it a coat of my homemade chalk paint. It took two coats of the homemade chalk paint and the milk was raised on this little container and I wanted it to kind of stand out. So after all of the chalk paint had dried, I'd sponged on a little bit to give it a little bit of texture. I took some black acrylic paint on the sponge and just dabbed it over that raised milk. I thought that was easier than trying to hand paint exactly where those letters were. And then afterwards, I just took the paintbrush in and just kind of cleaned up around the edges where the black had kind of spilled onto that white paint. It worked really well. I took my sanding block and I roughed up all around the edges to make that black paint peek through. And I thought it made it look vintage and old. I wanted to make a little hang tag for it. I printed off a picture of a cow and I went around the edges of the tag with a black marker so it looked a little bit aged added some twine and some embellishments, put it on the top of that little container, and I think it looked fantastic. Oh, I also added a few beads that I painted, and so cute and so easy to do. 
to add to your farmhouse decor. It's a wooden napkin holder, but I'm not going to use it as a napkin holder. I am going to make it into a place to keep my mail at my front door. I gave it a really good coat of my homemade white chalk paint. And then I designed a graphic that said mail. I thought that would be perfect for the front of it. I used my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method, stuck it on the front of that napkin holder, let it dry, and then I rubbed all the paper off, gave it a really good sanding so it was nice and rustic and chippy and perfect spot to keep mail at the front door that's pretty bling pin i never pass them up if i find them because they can be upcycled into such cute kitchen decor i sprayed it with some matte black chalk paint and then i did the white roller part in white chalk paint and then i made the graphic bake it looked really cute on this rolling pin use my mod podge and uh, put the mod podge on let it sit for 24 hours then i wet it down, rubbed off the graphic, added a really cute little ribbon to it that finished it off perfect. And these actually sell really well too. So if you see them, grab them if you're a reseller. And here's another way that I had another rolling pin that I upcycled. I painted the handles with some red acrylic paint. I like to use an, a nice bright color that you would find in a farmhouse kitchen. Let them dry really well. And I had this wrapping paper that had vintage advertising on it. I'm just going to decoupage it onto the middle of that rolling pin. I'm going to use my Mod Podge mat and just put a liberal coat over the rolling pin part. But when you want your paper to be a little bit more pliable when you're going to decoupage with it, I just like to spray it with a little bit of water. It just helps it lay flat and decoupage nicer. I just do it in little sections, doing a little bit underneath and then a little bit on top. And when it's all done, I'll set it aside, I'll let it dry, and that's all there is to this project. And like I said before, these little rolling pins sell really well if you're a reseller. Packed a lot in here, so hopefully you're still all following along because there's some really great ideas for inspiration. This was really dated, scream 90s with that heart in it, but I knew I could work around it and make it into something with a lot of farmhouse charm. I spray painted it with some matte black spray paint and then I just took my candle wax and I went crazy. I put candle wax all over it everywhere and then I just started to layer up my paint. I'm just using some acrylic paint that I had left over. Acrylic paint and then candle wax and then acrylic paint and then candle wax and I layered up a whole bunch of different colors letting them completely dry in between each coat. White is going to be my top coat. I'm going to let it completely dry and then I took my scraper and I scraped off and I sanded off anywhere where there was wax that paint color that was underneath is going to pick through. I picked out one of my favorite farmhouse graphics that I have out of my Etsy store. That's what I'm gonna put on the top of this stool. Use my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer. Get it all even exactly where I want it on that stool. Left it and then the next day I came back, I rubbed off all of the paper and then I sealed it up really well with some polyacrylic sealer. Full of chippy, layered paint and I love it. I am going to put a nice graphic on this. I think I'm gonna put a coffee graphic on it. This was, I think it might've been a teapot, but I have a really nice coffee graphic that I found on Design Space on Cricut that I'm going to use. Uh, it's really hard to do the Mod Podge transfer method or any sort of transfer method on a surface like this. It only works well for me anyways if it's chalk painted and I wanted to keep the metal color so that's why I'm going to use my Cricut. So we're going to cut it and get it ready to put on the pot. I'm going to clean my pot off with some rubbing alcohol and a little cloth. You want to make sure you have a really good clean surface before you put your graphics on. I've put some permanent vinyl on my mat and we're just going to cut it up and then I'll weed it, put some transfer tape on it and then put it on our little pot. We're ready to put the graphic on. A little tip when you're trying to put graphics on and it's something round that rolls around, I like to weed and use a lint roller. Put the lint roller up against your project and then it won't roll around. And then you can take your graphic, it's a really cute coffee graphic, make sure it's centered and lay it down on your project.
I think this turned out really cute and what an easy upcycle. I love the graphic. And you can either leave the lid on or take the lid off and put a full plant in it. Either way, it's really cute for a farmhouse kitchen. Next project is this vase. I picked it up for $4.99 at the thrift store and I think it might have been 50% off. Not liking the green. I am going to do my sand paint technique on this and I picked up what you always have to look for in our Home Depot. They have an oops section where they've mixed up the wrong paint. You can get fantastic um, deals there and I really like it's almost like a gray stone color. I'm going to mix some of this up into some sand paint and paint my vase. If you've never made sand paint before you need to try it out. It works fantastic. I'll put a link down below in the description and you can get the recipe there but what a fantastic color in the oops section. Always always check it out. I think it looks just like cement and it's going to make this look like a real nice piece of stoneware. Um, I've cleaned it really well with some alcohol, wiped it all off, and now I'm going to start painting. First coat's on and we've already got some texture being created. This will probably take three or four coats and I'm going to let it completely dry in between each coat. And here's after the second coat, gonna let that dry and then put on the third coat and we'll see what it looks like, whether that will be the final coat or not. I'm now ready for my last coat and look at the texture that we've created so far. Now for my last coat, what I like to do, I like to, you always have to keep stirring this to bring the sand up and make sure it's mixed really well into the paint. But what I like to do with my last coat is I like to just dab it on and it just gives that little bit extra grainy texture on top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put on this last coat. What a lucky find, finding that gray paint in the oops section at Home Depot. I think it turned this vase into an amazing upcycled piece and I love the texture. Next project is this little glass vase. I fell in love with it. I actually, I have no idea what it was and it has a hole in the bottom, um, hole in the top, looks like a beehive, little things in it. It's really dirty, needs a really good cleaning. Picked it up for $3.99. I'm kind of wondering if it was something to catch bugs. If any of you know what this is, let me know down, down in the comments, but I have a wonderful idea on how to upcycle this. Okay, I've got it all cleaned up and ready to go. And I mixed up some baking powder paint. If you haven't tried this, I did a video not that long ago on how to make it and it creates a fluffy, fantastic paint. That's what I'm going to use. And uh, I love this yellow color. Let's get painting. This might take two or three coats and this paint does not have a long shelf life. So only mix up as much as you need for your project um, or it'll dry out on you. The first coat has dried and now I'm going back and I'm just patting the paint on for the second coat and it just kind of gives it that real kind of fluffy textured look. I think it kind of looks great. It makes this look more like a beehive. And that's the second coat on and see how fluffy it is. I love it. My beehive is completely dry and wow, talk about texture. I love it. And I'm gonna make a little hang tag for it. I've just got a piece of MDF board. I'm gonna paint it black and then I'm gonna put a coat of white chalk paint on it. And then I've got a really cute honey graphic that I'm gonna put on the top of it. So I'm going to work away on that. My little tag has sat overnight. I've got my little dish of water. I'm just going to wet it so you can start to see the graphics through. You want to make sure when you're doing this technique, you don't put too much water on. So you can see how the graphics are just starting to show through. And then rub it off. And you have a graphic. So easy. 
my tags all done and I think it's adorable. I took a yellow marker and I kind of colored in the bee a little bit to give it a little extra touch, drilled a hole in the top, put some twine, and I'm gonna attach it to my painted beehive. The texture that this baking powder paint made was perfect for this project. And I love that graphic. Next upcycle is this nice wooden shelf that I found. I like it that the pegs are at the top. And what's also fabulous is the little pegs weren't glued in. So I can pull them all out and it makes it so much easier to paint this, this board. I'm gonna layer a couple colors on this using my candle wax technique and finish it off with some white chalk paint. This is just a pillar candle that I got at the dollar store. It works great for distressing wood. You just rub it along the wood wherever you think it would naturally kind of wear off. And when you paint it, wherever this wax is, the paint won't adhere to it. I guess I forgot to take the price tag off of this. I picked this up for $3.99 at Value Village. First color that I'm gonna put on is some of my homemade black chalk paint. And I'm just gonna paint the whole board. I'm actually not gonna put the black paint intentionally along these grooves, because I think that would be nice to leave that kind of that wood color. I'm gonna put another coat of candle wax on top of the black that's all dry. And then I've got some green acrylic paint that I'm going to use. I think it'll be really nice to pop through when we're all finished. This is just actually Christmas green. And I'm just gonna put a light coat over the whole board. It doesn't matter if I have every little bit painted because we're gonna have this be really distressed looking. The green's all dry. Some more wax. You can never have enough wax when you wanna create distressed paint. I get really aggressive with it because I love the look of the distressed wood, but you don't need to. If um, you like just a little bit, then just use a little bit of the wax. Okay, now we're gonna put on our last coat and I've got some of my homemade white chalk paint and I'm gonna put a good coat of that over the whole shelf. Okay, the white paint is completely dry. Now here's the trick when you're doing the wax technique. Take out your heat gun or your hair dryer and you're gonna warm up all of that wax that's been layered on this paint. And then we're gonna take a scraper. This is just a razor scraper. You can use a regular scraper and we're gonna scrape away at that wax and all those layers will show up. Okay, we've got it all scratched off and distressed. And we've taken that plain stained board and made it look really old and vintage. And now I'm gonna put a graphic in the middle that just says welcome and then put the pegs back in. I've just printed off a simple welcome and I'm just gonna use my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer to um, put it on the back. And I think I'm gonna kind of center it so it looks nice with the pegs. So I'm gonna put it maybe right about here. This is sat overnight, it's completely dry. I've just got a little bit of water and a little sponge. I'm just gonna wet that until you can just start to see the graphics show through and then rub off all the paper. And then once all the paper's gone, we're gonna have a beautiful graphic on our coat rack. This technique takes a little bit of practice and just a little bit of patience, but once you get the hang of it, it works fantastic. These were done on regular computer paper on my laser jet printer. My graphic is all finished. It looks great. I really like it. I'm going to put a coat of the polyacrylic sealer over the whole coat rack. And then I'm just going to leave the pegs, just that natural wood color. I like, I like it. Uh, just natural and I've got a little bit of wood glue I'm gonna put a little bit of wood glue in each little hole and then stick the post in and it'll stay really secure just like that 
I took a plain wooden hanger and turned it into a chippy old looking piece. And I love that I just kept the pegs, just the wooden color. I think that finishes it off nice. Next project. I think this came off of a broken piece of a clock. I tucked it away because I knew I could use this piece for something. Not loving the heart here. So I'm gonna take it out to my shed and I'm gonna cut it straight across here and get rid of this heart. And then I'll have a nice square to put a picture in the middle. So I took this out to my shed and I just drew a line across the bottom here and then cut off this heart. And now we're left with a way more modern looking frame than with this but I'll still keep this I'm gonna tuck it away you never know when you can use a cutoff heart for a project I'm gonna put a coat of my black homemade chalk paint over the whole frame and then I'll put a little bit of candle wax on it and then I'll cover it up with the uh, white chalk paint I don't want this really distressed, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of wax just along the edge and around the corners, because I just want that black just peeking out just a little bit. So that should be enough. And I had a piece of really thin wood and um, I just cut it out to size to fit on the inside. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give everything a coat of my white chalk paint. It's completely dry. I just put a light coat of the white on top of it. And I'm just gonna take my sanding block and everywhere where there was wax, that paint is gonna sand off. And you can see how it was pretty aggressively put right there. So that took it right down to the wood. I really like that chip it, that chippy rustic wood look i know it's not for everybody but i really love it so that's why a lot of my projects i do this technique on them i'm just going to sand in the middle here and then we'll be all ready to finish off the inside we're going to do some iron-on decoupage and this was printed off on my inkjet printer it's a picture from one of our camping adventures cooking a turkey over the campfire now you want to seal your ink when you've used an inkjet otherwise when you apply the mod podge on top or underneath your inks could smear i just have some aerosol hairspray you just want to give it a, a good coat set it aside and let it dry and that will seal all of the ink into your pitcher I'm gonna be using my Mod Podge mat and I'm gonna put a liberal amount over all of the wood and then we're gonna let that dry and then we're gonna put another coat on and then we're gonna iron on our photo. So that's a pretty good coat on that. I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry. We have two coats of the Mod Podge completely dry. I'm just gonna take my photo and center it exactly where I want it. And then I'm gonna take a piece of parchment paper. You wanna make sure you're using parchment paper, not wax paper, and make sure everything's nice and smooth. And now I have my iron. I have it set on the highest setting with no steam. And you're just going to just very gently just iron on your photo. And this is fantastic for not having any bubbles or wrinkles and it works really well and it just takes a little bit of pressure just to make sure that you've got your photo sealed right on you can lift up your parchment paper and see how it looks and do it a little bit more if you think you need it and we have and we have a perfect photo ironed on to that piece of wood to put in the frame. Now as a top coat, I don't like to use Mod Podge. I like to use a polyacrylic sealer. Make sure you're using a water-based one. If you're using an oil base, it will yellow on you. So I'm just gonna put a light coat over that and it'll seal it right up really nice. I think this turned out fantastic and it is exactly what I wanted. I have an adventure wall where I've done a whole bunch of pictures of all the adventures my husband and I have done and been on. 
and this is going to be added to that wall. Next project is this mail and bill wall hanging. Uh, it looks like somebody's done maybe some tool painting and it's got a little tiny bit of a raised edge on it. I'm gonna take it out to my shed and give it a really good sanding so it's nice and smooth and then bring it back in here and start painting. This is all painted. It took two coats of the spray paint and then I put a light coat of my homemade chalk paint on top. I wanna to put graphics on it and my graphics adhere better to a chalk painted surface. This is the graphic that I'm going to use. I'm gonna turn this into a cell phone charging area. And I've printed off my graphics on regular computer paper, reverse the text. This graphic is available in my Etsy store. If you find these out thrifting and you wanna make one for yourself, I'm gonna put the charging station up here and one and two here. And it's gonna keep your cell phones nice and neat and tidy and you can plug it in. So I'll show you how I'm gonna finish it up. I got my graphics all cut out. I'm gonna be using my Mod Podge mat and I'm just gonna put a real light coat of the Mod Podge over the graphics and then center them exactly where I want them. Make sure there's no wrinkles and bubbles. And then I'm gonna set it aside until tomorrow and then we'll rub off the paper and we'll finish this up. Okay, it's the next day and this is completely dry. I've just got a sponge with a little bit of water on it. I'm just gonna lightly dampen that and rub off these graphics. I'm really excited for this project because I always see these little mail holders, uh, mail organizers at the thrift store and I think this is gonna work out perfect. I'm saving this one for myself. It's gonna go in my kitchen and I'm going to be charging my cell phones in it. I have this all done and I'm gonna drill some holes in the sides to fit through my chargers. Now I have a type C charger and an iPhone charger. So you wanna make sure that you're picking out a drill bit that's gonna be big enough for those chargers to go through. And this one's gonna work perfect. Now, because this is gonna have lots of fingers coming in and out, I wanna seal it really well so I can wipe it down with a damp rag if I want to. I'm gonna use my engine enamel. This gives it a really durable coating. I'm gonna take it out to my shed and give it a really good coat all over the whole project. Now I've got the holes all done and you can see putting the smaller end in through there. And this is my type C, it fits right through there. And now you can mount it on your wall and charge your cell phones and it looks pretty. I love this DIY. I think that it just kind of takes a messy looking charging area and makes it nice and pretty and you can just set your cell phone in there and plug these ends into your wall outlet and you're all set. So keep your eye out for these letter and bill holders and give this DIY a try. Next up cycle is this little metal pot that I found at the thrift store. The white paint needed to be freshened up a little bit. So I mixed up some of my white homemade chalk paint and I gave it one good coat across that whole pot. And again, anything that I put a little quote on or a little word always sells better for me. So we're gonna do this little quote. I've sized it for my little metal pot, use the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method and apply it to the pot. Now there's other ways that you can put graphics on your projects. You can do a custom napkin, you can use your Cricut, you can even hand draw, but I just find that this works so well for me and I can put it on so many projects and it's affordable. That's what I love about it. It doesn't cost a lot of money. You don't have to buy vinyl. You just need computer paper and some Mod Podge and most of us already have a printer. While I'm waiting for that graphic to dry, I'm gonna add some twine along the top of this little pot. I've let it sit for 24 hours and again, we're dampening it. We're going to now rub off the paper. This can be the trickiest part of this technique and if you just take your time and you practice a little bit, you can get really good at it. It doesn't take much pressure and using your fingers works the best so you can feel the paper rubbing off underneath.
Once I have all the paper off, again, I'm gonna seal it up with my polycrylic sealer. I love it because you can now dust your project if you want to afterwards. And how cute is this? I think I might've paid 50 cents for it at the thrift store. I've upcycled it. You can put a full plant in it or you can even plant a real plant in it and it's perfect to give as a gift. Did you know you could DIY your own labels using packing tape? I picked up these glass jars. I'm gonna keep them in my kitchen pantry, but I wanna custom make some labels for them. And I'm gonna show you today how easy it is. Now this will only work with a laser printer. It will not work with an inkjet printer. You're gonna need some packing tape. I've printed these labels off with my laser printer on regular computer paper. You're gonna need a credit card and a dish of warm water. This graphic is available in my Etsy store. I think it's four or five sheets of all common words of things that you would have in your kitchen or your pantry that you can make labels with. I'll put that link in the description and you can check that out in my Etsy store if you're interested. I've also sized these to the size that I wanted in my Google Docs and now we're ready to turn them into labels. This is just regular packing tape and I've cut a length a little bit bigger than the graphic. I've put a little dime on the table because when you're pressing it down, it makes it easier to peel the tape off afterwards. Just a little crafting hack. And then take a card and really press that tape into that piece of paper. You want it to be really bonded well with that packing tape. And you can see how much easier it is to peel that tape off with that little dime underneath. We're now ready to turn this into a label. Before we do that, we're gonna finish up some more and same process, use your packing tape, press it down really firmly onto the paper. And once we have these all made, we're going to then get that dish of warm water and you just soak them in the water. You're gonna let them sit for about 30 to 60 seconds, depending on how thick your paper is. And once that has happened, we're going to take it out of the water and you're going to rub the paper off the back. And as you do that, it's just like magic. The graphic is going to stay on the tape, but the paper is going to rub away and the tape is going to remain sticky. So you're creating a label that you can put on your glass jars or bottles and display them in your home or in your pantry, in your kitchen, add it to your junk journals, mixed media. It's just limitless what you can do with this fun technique. Once we have all the labels finished, you can go in and you can neaten them up and make the lines nice and straight before you add them onto your project. And after the labels have dried, the glue reactivates in the tape and you're able to tape it onto your glass jar or your glass bottles and it's gonna stick. And the nice thing about this is if you change your mind, you can peel the tape off, you can make another label or you can change up your decor. This is probably one of my favorite DIYs that I do. It's so fun, it makes everything look nice and neat and organized, and it's also a really great DIY to do with kids. You could print off their name, they could add it onto their books or their backpacks. Fun DIY. Now here is the graphics that you're gonna get out of my Etsy store. I'll put the link down below. There's all kinds of them, so you can label everything in your kitchen or your pantry and have fun doing it. And this is the pillar candle that I picked up at the dollar store. You want to make sure that you pick up a candle that's light in color for this technique. And we're going to custom make our own napkins so you can put whatever you want on them and custom make them with names or pictures or graphics. Um, today I'm going to show you how I'm going to make one with one of my graphics. And you only want the back of the napkin and then you want to iron the napkin flat I'm just gonna put a piece of parchment paper over top of it so we can get rid of the wrinkles before we go to use it. Just keep it on setting six, no steam, and just get the wrinkles out of that napkin. 
And you wanna be using a white napkin onto a white candle, so it'll blend in really well. And now it's nice and flat, and it'll be really easy to work with. Now I've just got a plain piece of computer paper and I'm using my crafter's tape and I'm just gonna put a little dab in each corner and on the side of the computer paper so I can stick the napkin onto it so it will go through my printer. This technique will work on an inkjet and a laser jet printer. And you just wanna set down your paper right in the middle of the napkin and smooth it out so there's no wrinkles and no bubbles and then we're ready to cut off all the excess napkin around the edge. And make sure you cut the napkin really close to the edge of the computer paper because you don't want any edges to get caught as it's going through your printer. These candles would be perfect for a wedding, baby shower, um, birthdays, just to give away as a gift because you can customize them with names, anything that you want. The possibilities are endless. Now I'm ready to put it through my printer. My napkin goes face down in this type of printer. Shut the door and we're ready to print my graphic on it. And there we have the graphic printed on the napkin, ready to use on the candle. And now I'm just gonna cut around the graphic, just leaving a little bit along the edges. It'll blend in really well when we put it on the candle. And now we're just gonna take the napkin off the piece of computer paper and we're ready to put it on through the candle. Now for this step, you're gonna need wax paper. This is really important. You actually need the wax paper because we need the wax on the one side to help melt the napkin into the candle. So you wanna take a piece that's a little bit bigger than the candle to wrap around. And you'll notice on the wax paper, you can feel the waxy side and the paper side. The wax side, you want to go in towards the candle. So we're gonna place a napkin, and I got a little bit of static in my napkin here, but we're going to place a napkin exactly where you want it on the candle. And then we're going to take the wax paper and press it down firmly against that napkin. You want it nice and flat with no wrinkles, no bubbles. Get it laying right tight to that napkin. And then you're gonna grab the excess wax paper at the back to hang on to when you're heating it. I like to use a dish towel to hang on to it, or you can get an oven mitt, but you wanna have something because it does get quite warm when you're using the hair dryer. So you wanna protect your hand from the heat. And then you're just gonna take your hair dryer on the highest setting and just gently go back and forth over the napkin and the candle. Don't hold it in one spot too long because you'll actually melt the candle too much. You just wanna go back and forth really gently and as it's starting to melt, you'll notice that the napkin will change color and it'll get darker so you can tell that the wax paper has melted into the napkin and the napkin below is starting to melt. Just take your time and go back and forth really slow. You don't want to put too much heat on this at once or you will wreck the candle and you'll melt it too much. And you can see how it's starting to get darker now. That means that it's working and starting to melt into the candle. This is such an easy DIY and it is so fast and so easy to do. I am having a lot of fun making a lot of candles. And you can see how dark the lettering is now, so you know that it's almost finished and almost ready. And now you're just gonna gently peel away that wax paper and the napkin will be adhered right to the candle. And that's it, that's all you have to do. And if you don't wanna make your own custom napkins, you can just use a napkin with a pattern on it right from the dollar store. 
And always remember, never leave a candle unattended. I've burned these before, never had any problem with the napkin um, applied to these. But just be mindful when you're using them. Most of these I just use as decor and I actually don't even light them. So head to the dollar store, pick up some of these candles, or look at the thrift store next time you're there and pick up some of the candles there and give this technique a try. And this is what I'm gonna decoupage. I picked this up, I think at a yard sale. It was like 50 cents. I tucked it away because I wasn't really quite sure what I wanted to do with it and it has so many angles on it. So I'm going to show you how I'm gonna do it. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a coat of my black homemade chalk paint over the whole um, container. I'm gonna distress this after, so that's why I like to put the black paint as the base because when I distress it and sand it, the black will peek through and give it a little bit more of an aged look. The black chalk paint is all dry, and now I'm gonna put a coat of white chalk paint over the whole um, container. I have a really great homemade chalk paint recipe. I'll put the link for that below in the description. And after I've got this all painted and it's dried, I've taken a 120 grit sandpaper and I'm sanding around all of the edges. Okay, I have the dish all prepped and it's really intricate. So I thought I would do a tutorial to show you um, how you can decoupage on something that has lots of angles and little bits on it. Um, so this might not be a beginner project, but it's lots of fun to watch. And this is what you're gonna to need to decoupage. You're gonna need some, I like to use my mod, my mat Mod Podge, a little bit of saran wrap, napkin that you love, and a little paintbrush. You wanna make sure that you're only working with one ply of the napkin. So we're just gonna take off the top sheet. I don't get rid of these. I like to make my own custom napkins and I also use them for cleanup. I'm gonna start working on the lid first. So I wanna cut a napkin just a little bit bigger than the lid size and I wanna make sure that I have the flower centered in the middle. So I'm just gonna cut it out. And then we're ready to decoupage. That looks good. Okay, we're just going to put just a light amount right to the very edges. The mistake that a lot of beginner decoupagers do is putting on too much Mod Podge. If you put too much on, it's gonna wrinkle and bubble for you really easy. So just put a light coat on right to the very edge. And then you're gonna pick up your napkin. You can't move the napkin after you've put it on. Put it exactly where you want it. Lightly press it down. I like using my saran wrap. And then just press it down to get all the wrinkles and bubbles out. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and just kind of cut off some of that. I have a lot of extra there I don't need on. That's hanging off. And then once this is dry, then we will sand off all this extra around the edges and it'll look nice and neat and tidy. I'm gonna set the lid aside and let it dry and I'm gonna start working on these panels. Same thing, we're gonna cut out a piece of napkin. The size that we need and then just Mod Podge it on. These don't have to be perfectly cut out. You just want a smaller size so it's easier to work with. Here's a little trick if you have something that is kind of moving around on you. I love these little lint rollers. I use this with my Cricut. Stick it on your table and then stick your project on and it's not going to move on you. Paint on your Mod Podge right to the edge. Now I don't want my Mod Podge to hang over the edge of this so I'm just putting it right to the edge because I'm going to do it in panels. I'm going to press it down exactly where I want it. Get my saran wrap. Press it down. That looks perfect. Now, before I do this one, I wanna let this one dry. So I'm gonna go on to this one here, and then I'm just gonna work away, away my way around.
I've set this aside and I've let it dry. It's all dry completely. Um, now before I sand off all these little edges, I like to put a top coat on. I don't like using Mod Podge as a top coat. Um, I find that it does introduce some bubbles and wrinkles a little bit easier than if I just use my polyacrylic sealer. So that's what I'm gonna use as a top coat. This one's a satin base. You can use whatever base you want. Make sure you're using a water-based um, polyacrylic sealer or your projects will yellow on you if you use an oil-based. I find if you try to sand these edges off before you put a top coat on, you can tear at the napkin. So by putting the top coat on and then sanding, you can have a cleaner edge. And I'm just gonna put the, top, the polyacrylic on the top of this. I'm doing this kind of in sections because I also wanna put the napkins on these, but I want to finish these panels first before I do the next one, or it's gonna to be too difficult to, um, to finish up. So less is more when you're putting on a top coat. If you put on too much, it's gonna bubble and wrinkle on you. So I just like to put a light coat right to the edge, set it aside, let it dry, and then we're gonna sand off the extra around the edge. Now it's completely dry and I'm taking my 120 grit sandpaper and I'm sanding off all of those extra edges and making it nice and neat and clean. I've got it all done. And I think I wanna decoupage, I'm gonna leave this white, but I think I wanna decoupage these. So that's what I'm gonna work on next. I have this all sanded and ready for the panels to be done. So let's get to work. For these smaller pieces, I wanna make sure I cut out a piece of the flower to have on it. Um, so I'm just gonna go piece by piece. This is kind of tedious, but it's gonna look beautiful when it's done. So we're just gonna get the Mod Podge again. Just put a little bit on that little panel. Press on your napkin exactly where you want it. Smooth out any wrinkles or bubbles. You can use a saran wrap if you want to help it along. And then I'm gonna do the same as what I did on the base. I'm gonna go every other, let these dry, and then add the next ones in. So I'm just gonna work away at that. Now I'm gonna add these panels on, same process. got them all done and I'm going to set them aside, let them dry again, put the top coat on. All completely dry on those other panels so now I'm going to put the coat of polyacrylic sealer on those and then set it aside and let it dry. A few steps but it's going to be worth it in the end and it's going to be beautiful. So every other one that I did this time putting a coat of the polyacrylic sealer, just a light coat. Remember, less is more when you're putting on a top coat because you don't want to introduce any bubbles and wrinkles. And then we're going to set it aside and let it dry again. That one's done. I'll put the top coat on these ones. Okay, let's them dry. Nice and neat, and I've got these edges all finished. Now I'm ready to do these ones. All dry, let's do the last bit of sanding. One little tip when you're sanding is sand away from the project and that way you won't be pulling up the napkin in case there's a little bit that didn't adhere very well. And I try to, try to just to pull it that way and it'll prevent that. 
and see how I'm going this way on this one. And it just pulls that napkin right away and leaves a really nice finished edge. You have to be a little bit patient, but I'll show you. See how nice of an edge that gives? I'm just going in now and just touching up the inside a little bit with uh, the black chalk paint. When I was doing all that sanding, it kind of kind of pooled a little bit along the edges, so I just wanted to clean it up a little bit and put another coat on and it just makes it look a little bit nicer and a little bit more finished. And I'm going to do the same with the lid too. Put another coat all along the top. I'm not going to worry about the edges because I want to keep them kind of that distressed look, but I just want to neaten up the paint in the middle. And now you can see why I wanted to paint the black on the um, first layer, because when you sand, it peeks through that black and it kind of gives it that antique kind of old look, which I love. I know it's not for everybody, but I really love the rustic look. And um, by doing that base coat black, it just gives it that extra little touch. Now I have this whole finished, but I have something that I like to do with projects that I use all the time. I, this is going to be mine. I'm gonna keep my rings and earrings in it and I wanna seal it really well. So what I like to use is this premium automotive acrylic enamel. It seals it up rock hard so you can wipe it, you can dust it almost makes it waterproof um, and I love using it. So this is a gloss formula and I kind of want to have this have a really glossy sheen to it too. You can find this in automotive stores. Um, I'm in Canada. We have a store called Canadian Tire. You can find it in there or you can sometimes find it even on Amazon. I'll put a link down below and you can check out that link. So I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to spray it with this acrylic enamel. I'm going to finish it off with this little knob I had in my stash and I think it matches beautiful. I'm using some E6000 to glue it on the top. We're going to let it dry and I'll show you the finished project. This might be one of my favorite decoupage projects that I've ever done. I found the napkins at HomeSense. I absolutely love them. I love the way it's rustic and chippy. Let me know what you think down in the comments. The first thing that we're going to work on is this handsaw. I find these all the time at yard sales. Always pick them up because they make fantastic gifts for dads and grandpas and uncles. And I'm gonna show you how you can uh, turn this into a fantastic gift. The thing with saws is when you're painting it, you have to make sure that you're painting it with a primer, a spray primer first. If you don't, the rust leaches through and um, you don't get good coverage with your paint. I've already sprayed this, this was done quite a while ago with some primer. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a coat of white chalk paint on top of this. I'm going to put a grandpa's garage graphic on this. I've printed this off. Make sure when you're using this technique, I'm using the Mod Podge reverse graphic technique, that you reverse the text. And I've sized it in my Word program to fit on the saw. This is all dry. It sat for 24 hours and I'm just dampening it and rubbing the paper off. If you see these out and about, I see them all the time in the summer at yard sales. Grab them. They're perfect gifts for people that are hard to buy for. And I also like making them into Christmas theme ones. These are so great to customize. You can do grandpa, papa, dad, workshop, garage, woodshed, anything this 
so many ideas. So I really enjoy doing these. And when I find them, I always do a little bit of a happy dance. I'm going to work on this little plaque. It had, um, I think it had some sort of a quote on it, probably from the 70s. And a long time ago, I put a coat of white chalk paint on it, set it aside and never finished it. But I, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to fill in this little hole because I want to put a little hanger at the back. I don't want to hang it through this here. So I've just got some wood filler and I'm just going to fill up that hole and let it dry. I've got the hole all filled in and it's dry and I just sanded it down. I have a nice flat piece of wood now and I'm going to give it a coat of my homemade white chalk paint. I got it all painted and, and then I sanded it down with some 80 grit sandpaper and I love the little scalloped edge on it. I'm going to pick out a really nice quote to put on this. I designed this graphic last week and I love it. It's reversed right now because I've printed it off on just regular computer paper on my laser jet and I'm going to use the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. Um, but it's got a lot of farmhouse vibes and I'm going to put it on this plaque. Okay, this is back for 24 hours. I've got a little dish of water. Just going to wet it until you can just start to see the graphics show through and then rub off the paper. We're going to be left with a really cute tea lover sign. That little wooden vintage plaque that I picked up at the thrift store turned into this beautiful sign. I think this would look great in a tiered tray or on a coffee and tea bar. And I love the graphic and those little beveled edges finished it off completely. The next thing that I'm going to work on is this charger plate. Um, I picked it up at a thrift store. I think it was a dollar and it's regularly uh, $2.47 from Walmart. It's a pretty heavy duty one. I, a long time ago, took it out in my shed and I gave it a coat of primer. Um, when you're doing anything with plastic, I like to use that spray primer first. The bin works perfect as a primer. And then you can paint anything on top of it because it has that primer to adhere to. So I'm going to paint it black with some of my baking soda paint. I got one coat of the black um, chalk paint on and then I remembered I had a little tiny bit of some of this gray sand paint left over from a project that I did last week on a vase. I want to use it up and I think it's going to look nice on this. So I'm going to put the next couple coats. I'm going to use uh, this paint up. The first coat is dried and now I'm going to put a second coat on and it has some really great texture to it. I, I love this, using this paint, it kind of gives everything kind of that stoneware look and um, you can use a terracotta color, you can use white, black, and it looks fantastic. So with my last coat, I just like to pat it on because then it gives it a little bit more texture and um, we'll be finished with this painting. My sand paint is all dry on that charging plate and I just love the texture that it makes. It just takes a plain, ordinary piece to the next level. So what I'm going to do with this charging plate, I painted the back of it. I have this wooden bowl that I've collected. I collect way too many wooden bowls. I'm going to use my E6000 and glue it on the bottom, and it's going to make a really nice raised plate that will be perfect for a table centerpiece. The texture that this sand paint makes is fabulous. If you haven't mixed up this recipe, you need to try it. That little bowl on the bottom just raised it up a little bit and I love it on my kitchen table. Next project, I have this vase that I picked up at a yard sale. Uh, not really loving the color of it, but I love the pattern on it. So I wanna keep the pattern. I'm gonna mix up some of my baking soda paint and I have some terracotta colored latex paint that I'm going to mix into the baking soda paint. I really love this color. I've used it quite a bit on some of my other projects and I think it's going to make this kind of look like a terracotta vase. So I'm going to mix that up and get painting. The first coats all dry and 
I love how it left the texture and made it could even pop a little bit more than when it was just the glass. Second coat, I'm gonna use a sponge and sponge it on and I think that will cover it better. That's exactly what I was wanting and I love how the pattern showed through really well after I painted it and I love this color. Fantastic, successful upcycle. Next thing that I'm gonna work on is these frames. I'm gonna take the backing out and um, spruce up the frames. I picked these up at the thrift store for $4.99 and they were 50% off. So I thought that was a really good deal for some really good solid wood frames. And they just have staples in the back, just using my pliers and I'm just gonna pull it out. I have them all taken apart and actually the prints in them were little cards. Um, they're kind of sun faded, but I kind of like them. I'm not gonna put them back in these because that's not kind of the style that I'm going for with these frames, but I'm gonna tuck these aside because I'm gonna use them for another project. Okay, now we're gonna work on the frames. I wanna keep this the color that it is. So I've got some painter's tape. I'm gonna tape it off so I don't get any paint on it. And then we're gonna do a distressed finish on the rest of the frame. We're gonna use the candle wax technique if you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I love doing this to create chippy layered wood and I like being really aggressive with it because I love that chippy look on all of my projects. I know it's not for everyone and you don't have to do this step. You can just, if you're, you're redoing frames, you can just paint them just a plain color, but I like to add a little bit of jazz to it. I've got all the wax on, and now I'm gonna put a coat of the black chalk paint over the whole frame. And wherever there's a little bit of wax, that paint is not going to stick there. So you're gonna get that layered look of that paint color underneath. The coat of black is all dry. I'm gonna use another coat of wax just gonna kind of put it everywhere and then I'm gonna put a coat of white chalk paint on these are all dry we're going to use our packing tape to create the chippy layered look on this we're having a snowstorm here I don't want to take these outside to my shed and sand them so when you use this technique, you don't have to use the sander at all. No mess, it's really easy and it creates a fantastic finish. I've put the layers of wax on it. What I like to do, I like to heat it up a little bit with my heat gun so the wax kind of gets a little bit melt, melted before we put on our packing tape. This is seriously so easy. You just get a piece of packing tape and you rub it right into the wood and then you just Take a corner of it and peel it. And as you do, you are left with a fantastic layered chippy look. Isn't that fantastic? So I'm gonna work away on both of these frames. If you like this kind of look, you have to try this on some frames because it just works fantastic. Look at the chippy layered look that it gives. Okay, let's finish these off. You don't always have to do a transfer method or decoupage. You can just print off really great graphics and put them in a picture frame with glass. That's what I'm gonna do with these. I've just, I designed these two graphics last week and that's what I'm gonna put in these frames. I'm just gonna cut them to fit, and uh, I think they're looking, gonna look fabulous with this rustic kind of frame. And we're just gonna pull off the tape. I love that. I love the contrast of all the different colors. And they're all done. I love them, 
and I have a spot in my kitchen, I'm gonna keep these ones for myself. These graphics are available in my Etsy store. I love when I find these, but I'm never really fussy on the inside of them. They're always kind of dirty and yucky. So I like to take it all apart and take it right down to the wood. And um, it sometimes can be a little bit of a job to get it all taken apart. It can be glued in there pretty good, but it's worthwhile taking the time if you don't like it to um, take all of this out. So I'm going to work away at that. This is not for the faint of heart. It is a lot of work to get this out. And I probably, I probably have been a half an hour scraping everything out. I used my putty knife, I used an X-Acto knife. And then when I was all finished, I went through and I sanded everything down. It doesn't look really smooth, but it is. I've got it all smooth and, and all of the glue and everything scraped off. It's a mess, but it's so worth it when it's done. They turn out so cute. We're all ready to paint it. It has a little bit of a, a shiny lacquer on it. So I'm gonna take my sanding block and sand it all down. So it gives it a little bit of a rough surface. I've got my homemade white chalk paint and then I'm gonna paint everything inside and out. It'll probably take two really good coats. My jewelry box took two coats of the white chalk paint and it covered really well. Um, this kind of crackled a little bit. I think there was probably a little bit of glue that was still left on it, but that's okay because I'm going to decoupage a really pretty um, scrapbook piece of paper in the bottom here and here. And you know that I love that distressed look. So I'm going to take my sander and distress this up a little bit before I put some graphics on the top. I gave it a little bit of distressing, not a whole lot, just a little bit to make it look kind of vintage and old. And I didn't realize I took all the innards out and now this little tray doesn't work because it was sitting on top of a, some foam. I'm gonna save this for another project because I'll will keep this open for storage for the whole thing. So I'm going to now put in some scrapbooking paper. I'm going to decoupage in this um, to kind of spruce it up a little bit. I love this scrapbook paper. It has a real vintage old look and I have three sheets of it. So I'm going to have lots to do this project. I'm going to measure out the top and the bottom here, the size that I need, and then decoupage it right in. I got everything cut to size. It's a real shabby chic kind of look. I love that scrapbooking paper. I cut it with my paper cutter and a ruler so I could get it nice and exact. And I'm gonna use my Mod Podge mat to decoupage it in. I've got a really pretty quote that I'm gonna put on the top. Today only happens once, make it amazing. I love that and I think it suits the inside look and I've done this on regular computer paper, made sure I've reversed the text. This graphic's available on my Etsy store if you wanna grab it. And I'm gonna use my Mod Podge to put it on. Okay, this is the next day. It's all dry. I have my little dish of water and I'm just going to just dampen it so we can just start to see the letters show through. And we're gonna rub this paper all off. I got all the paper rubbed off. It's nice and dry. I'm gonna seal it up with some of my polyacrylic sealer, water-based. This is matte finish, and it'll seal it up really nice so if we ever need to dust it, it will work well. I think this turned out adorable. And you can only imagine all the different scrapbooking papers that you can choose from, so many different themes and quotes that you can put on them. 
and they make fantastic gifts. So let me know down in the comments, which project today was your favorite? And if you really like this video, I'm sure you'll probably like the next one. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Cutest little wooden fish at the thrift store. Knew I could upcycle it. I'm going to turn it into a sign. I've got this piece of wood that I saved out of a scrap wood pile and I love the rough edges on it. So let's get started. First step, I'm gonna leave the live edge, but I wanna put some black chalk paint in the middle. So I'm just gonna paint up to the edge, the whole piece of wood. The black's all dry. We're gonna get out our candle wax. This is just a pillar candle and I'm gonna rub it all along that black because I wanna make that paint nice and chippy. layer up a couple different colors. I've just got some acrylic paint. My yellow's almost gone, but I think I have enough. I want it to complement the yellow and the green in the fish. Everything's completely dry and I warmed up the wax and now I'm going to get out my scraper and I'm going to scrape away and as you do, it leaves a fantastic rustic finish. I designed this graphic, printed it on my LaserJet printer, reversed the text. If you want to grab it, it's available in my Etsy store. I'm going to use my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method and apply it to the sign. Our sign has sat overnight. I've just got a little rag with a little bit of water on it, just dampening the, the paper I can, until you can just start to see the graphics show through. And then we're going to rub off all of the paper. All the papers rubbed off, we're gonna seal it up with a polyacrylic sealer. I'm now gonna glue on my fish with some E6000 and some hot glue to keep it in place. And then I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry completely. Put on a little bit of hot glue just to hold it in place and that'll give it a really good bond. Place it exactly where I want it. We're gonna let it dry. And there's the cutest gone fishing sign. Beautifully distressed wood. I love the graphic. I think anybody that was a fisherman would love this sign. Next up cycle is this accordion coat hanger. I don't find that it's really durable and it's probably not gonna be very sturdy to hold a whole lot of things on. I'm gonna upcycle it into a plant trellis. I have a wooden stake that I got at the dollar store and I'm gonna use it to secure and make it a little bit more stable. I'm just gonna hot glue it in and it has a stake at the end so we can stick it into the dirt in the plant. Now that that stake is in there, it won't close and collapse. It's glued tight and we're gonna put it in my plant. And that's gonna help my Ponthos plant trail up that coat rack. I picked up this at the thrift store. It's got some rubber legs. It needs to have a good cleaning and sand it down a little bit. And I think I'm gonna do some ticking stripes on this and make it into kind of a farmhouse field tray. I've got it all sanded down and clean, and I'm gonna give it a coat of my homemade white chalk paint. I'm not gonna distress this. I'm gonna leave this a solid white color. I put three coats of my white chalk paint on this, and I've got some painter's tape, and I'm gonna put a ticking stripe on this side.
got it all painted on and it's all dry. I think I want it to stress around the edges. So I'm gonna take it out to my shed and give it a really good sanding. All distressed and I love it. And if you've been following along, you know I can't leave anything alone. I always have to have that rustic feel to it. I'm gonna seal this up really well because it's gonna have stuff sat on it probably in the kitchen and I wanna seal it with some engine enamel. This will give it a really durable coating. So if anything spills on it, it'll wipe off easy. I'm gonna take it outside and give it a really good spray. I love the striping on this. I think it turned out really nice. Added a plant to it. Looks perfect on our table. I love picking up vintage frames, yard sales, garage sales, thrift stores. Always pick them up, always have way too many. Had this in my stash and I'm gonna turn it into a beautiful sign. I wanna change the color of the frame a little bit. It didn't have a back. So I cut a piece of wood to fit into the back and I'm in going to incorporate this old horseshoe that I found. It's seen better days, but it's gonna look beautiful when it's all finished on this sign. Everything's gonna get a coat of my black homemade chalk paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that. Everything's got a coat of black. I didn't completely cover it. I wanted a little bit of that white to peek through and my piece of wood that I cut for the center, I'm gonna put a coat of white chalk paint on that, set it aside, but the frame, we're gonna get working on doing some fantastic distressing. I always get so excited when I have a project like this and I can start layering up colors and painting techniques um, and excited about what it's gonna turn out like. I've got a couple different colors, I've got a yellow, and I've got a rust color. I used this on another sign that I made last week. I loved it. So I'm gonna use these colors again. And I'm just going to just kind of hit and miss. I don't have to cover it completely. Just here and there. And then when this color is dry, then I'll do the same thing with the yellow paint. That color's all dry, now we're gonna just splash on a little bit of this yellow. We've got all those colors all layered on and now we're going to use hairspray. If you didn't see my tutorial on how to distress wood using hairspray, I'll put the link down below in the description. Works fantastic and it creates a beautiful crackle finish. What you wanna do is you wanna spray your hairspray over the entire frame and give it a really good thick coat. And then once you have it all covered, you wanna let it dry completely. Our hairspray is completely dry. Now I find this technique works best with acrylic paint on top. So I've got some white acrylic paint and you just wanna do long strokes. You don't wanna put too many back and forth motions in it because we're trying to get a really nice crackle finish. And if you work it too much, you won't get the crackles showing up. So I'm just gonna do long strokes over the whole frame until it's completely covered. And you can miss spots here and there because this is all about having a rustic finish. And I also find that this process works better if you use a heat gun to now dry that paint. If it dries faster, the crackles come out better. So I'm just gonna put my heat gun on a low setting you don't want to hold it too close and just dry. And as you dry, those crackles will appear. And look at the crackle that that hairspray made. I just love using that and it just makes everything look very authentic. I'm going to distress it a little bit more. I have a squirt bottle, just some water in it and I have a stiff stencil brush. I'm just gonna spray the water on the high areas. 
and then just wipe away with the stiff brush and it just takes away that really stark painted edge and makes it look a little bit more worn. So I'm just gonna work away on that. And after I've wiped off the area with my brush, I just like to take the sandpaper. This is just, um, I think it might be a 80 grit and just lightly kind of just touch it on the high areas. I've got it the way I like it. I've just got a rag. I'm just gonna wipe it all down, dry it really well, and then I'm gonna seal it with my polyacrylic sealer. I designed this graphic. I'm gonna use my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. Live like someone left the gate open. I think that's really appropriate with the horseshoe and I'm gonna apply it onto the base of the frame. My graphic has sat, it's all dry. I'm gonna take a damp rag and just dampen it so you can start to see the, sh the letters show through and then start rubbing off the paper. Got everything all coated in polyacrylic sealer, the frame and the sign. And now I'm just going to adhere my horse shoe onto this with some E6000 hot glue and it's gonna be all finished. I love it. I love the way that this turned out and that painting technique really perked up that frame. The little horseshoe, that was something that somebody probably threw out and didn't think there was any potential to it. And I thought it would look perfect with this quote. I love finding things at the thrift store that I can take apart and repurpose and upcycle into other things. This foot massager is a prime example. I was able to take it apart really easy with a couple bangs with a hammer and I have all these pieces now to create other things from uh, some skewers. We got all kinds of big huge beads and the first thing I'm going to do with them is I picked up these little wooden bowls. I'm going to use two of those big beads and some E6000 and we're going to create some really cute trinket dishes. I'm just gonna take my E6000, put a little bit of glue on the bottom of that one bead, and then attach it to the bottom of one of the wooden bowls. And then I'm going to put some E6000 on the top of the bead and put another bowl facing up on the top. When you're in the thrift store scouring around, always look for unusual things that would be made from beads that you could take apart and repurpose into new items. I'm just gonna put a little more E6000 on the top and secure that top little dish and let it dry completely. And these turned into really cute little trinket dishes. You can put little bracelets or your earrings or rings in and display them really pretty. Next upcycle, this folk art wall sconce, um, I, I am really torn with this because I always hate painting over somebody else's artwork. Somebody has taken a lot of time with this toll painting and I just can't bring myself to paint over it. So I'm actually going to take the shelf off of it. I'm gonna keep it as is and that will be the bottom of my project. I just put a little bit of wood filler in those three screw holes and we're ready to paint it. I'm gonna save this little shelf bit and turn it into something a little bit later. Gonna paint it with some black chalk paint. And I'm also gonna paint that little shelf with some black chalk paint while I have it on the go. Now I'm gonna take some candle wax and just go around the edges of that board just so when I paint on top of it and I sand it away, it'll give that distressed look. Next coat, I have some gray chalk paint that I'm gonna layer on top of that black. We're gonna get out the Elmer's glue cause we're gonna do a crackle effect on the top of this board. If you've been following around here for a while, you've seen me do this crackle technique quite a bit. I love the way it gives a piece of wood that vintage aged look. 
we're just gonna spread that Elmer's glue across that whole board in long strokes. I've let the Elmer's glue sit for about 30 seconds to a minute just to get a little bit tacky and then I'm gonna brush on my white. The key to having a successful crackle on your project is to do long strokes and not work that paint into the glue very much and then you'll get a perfect crackle. And it's all crackled and it turned out perfect. I love it. And we still have all that tool painting on the back that we saved. Some more of those beads from the foot massager. We're gonna E6000 and glue them onto the bottom of the board. Love the way that this turned out. Created a beautiful cutting board that's decor for the middle of our table. Now back to that foot massager again. This is the bottom of the foot massager and the two sides. I glued it together with some E6000, painted it with some black chalk paint, and now I'm painting it with this beautiful turquoise color, and it just turned it into a little mini tiered tray that you can keep a little vase, and I've just got a little plant that I'm propagating in it. Two beads from the foot massager and that shelf off the tool painting. I'm gonna turn this into a little cute sign for our patio. I'm gonna use my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method to put some graphics on, let it sit for 24 hours, and now it's ready to have the paper rubbed off. This has been really fun because I've taken that foot massager and I've taken it apart and I've created so many different projects with it and all it cost was $3.99 from Value Village, and I had a coupon too for 30% off. So perfect upcycling and repurposing happening here. Relax and unwind, you're on patio time. We're now gonna work on this welcome sign. It was $4.99 at Value Village. I'm gonna take off all of those hooks and we're gonna do a burning decoupage method on this sign. If you've been following along, you've probably seen me do this technique before. It works fabulous and it eliminates having to do a lot of sanding when you're decoupaging into those little intricate areas. I'm using one ply of a napkin and our Mod Podge and we're going to decoupage it onto that welcome sign. We are gonna be using a lighter and a flame. Make sure you have a squirt bottle full of water handy and you're doing this in a well-ventilated area. I'm out in my shed with the door open. If you're gonna do it in your home, maybe you could do it over your kitchen sink and just be really careful with it. I'm going to put the Mod Podge over the whole welcome sign and then lay that napkin down in it, smooth it out and make sure we get rid of all of the bubbles and wrinkles. So I have to use two napkins because this is a little bit of a bigger project. So I wanna make sure when I'm laying down that second napkin that I make sure that it's all lined up. And if you've never tried this technique, you need to give it a try because it is game changer and so much fun. I'm just gonna cut away as much of the extra napkin as I can because you don't wanna have too much napkin when you're burning it away or it'll flame up too much and it'll scorch around your letters. And the other thing is you wanna work quickly because when we do put the lighter to it, we wanna make sure that that Mod Podge is still wet. You don't want the Mod Podge to dry or it won't work properly. I've just taken the end of my scissors where there's little holes in between the letters and then you're just gonna take your lighter and just light that napkin on fire and you'll see as we watch it, it'll form all around those letters right into those little nooks and crannies. And your flame may go out and when it does, you can just start again and to get into those little holes in between the letters, like I did before, poke a little hole and then just put the lighter in, light it, and it'll form right around that whole letter. This is so fun to watch and it's almost mesmerizing. I sealed that all up with some polyacrylic sealer and put the hooks back on. And then I had this big piece of baseboard that I'm going to mount the welcome on. I just feel that it makes it look a little bit more sturdy and more expensive looking having this on a background. And I love the way that it turned out and using that burning technique, 
made it nice and speedy. Okay, now I'm gonna work on this home sign. I actually had an idea in my head of what I was going to do with it. And then I had one of my followers in the comments give me an idea and it inspired me to change what I was going to do with it. They had left a message and said, I think you should turn that into a little dog sign, somewhere to hang a leash and to hang a little dog jacket and to make the graphics love with the O being a dog paw. And I thought that's brilliant. That will work perfect for this. So change my thought and this is what I'm going to do. So thank you for your idea and your inspiration. I love when you guys go down in my comments and help me out with this kind of stuff. I've just got a little piece of wax. I'm gonna go around the outside. So when I do distress it, it'll help it along and make it look even more rustic and chippy. Now I'm gonna put a coat of homemade chalk paint on. Also put some painter's tape on those hooks. So when I did spray paint it, I didn't get any overspray on the hooks. Once it was completely dry, I sanded it down with my palm sander using some 80 grit sandpaper and I printed off my graphics and we're ready to put them on with the Mod Podge. All the graphics that I'm using today, you can grab out of my Etsy store. Make sure you use the code SAVE50 and you can get 50% off of all of the graphics over there. I set it aside and let it dry and now it's the next day and we're just gonna dampen it until you can just start to see the graphics through and then we're gonna rub off all of that paper. If you've been following along here for a while, you know I love this way to transfer graphics onto your project. It's so affordable and it takes a little bit of practice in the beginning, but once you get the hang of it, it is fantastic and the possibilities are endless. This technique does work best with a laser jet printer, but if you do have an inkjet, it'll still work with a little bit of practice. And this turned out adorable. My little Yorkie Tina is going to love this someplace to hang up her little jacket and her little leash. This project was also inspired by quite a few people down in my comments. I'm going to turn it into a cloche. I have an old spindle I'm going to cut the top off and I have an old piece of wood that I traced out a circle that's a little bit bigger than the vase and I cut a piece off the top of that spindle. We're going to use the E6000 to glue it onto the top so it creates a little bit of a handle. I had a plate and the circumference of the plate was just a little bit bigger than the vase so I traced it around this old piece of wood and I'm just going to use my jigsaw and just cut out that circle. Once I got it cut out, I took my sander and gave it a really good sanding and I love the way that it made the grain and the wood pop out. I'm not gonna paint it, I'm gonna use it the natural wood color. And I had a smaller circle that I'm gonna glue on the bottom of it. So when I do set it on a dresser or a table, it's gonna raise it up a little bit. Once the glue was completely dried, I sealed it up with a couple coats of my polyacrylic sealer. And I think this turned out darling. I had a little sign that I put in it that I'd made. I had an old antique book and some faux um, greenery. Set it on top of that wooden circle and it pulled it all together. I love it. And that spindle on the top finishes it off perfectly. Today I'm going to be upcycling this vintage jewelry box I picked up at Value Village for $9.99. I just find that it's really dated. It's kind of got that orange tinted stain on it and the inside is all lined with that felt paper and it's really stained and it's really dirty. I know I can upcycle it and make it pretty again. I always find these jewelry boxes at the thrift store and whenever I see them I always pick them up because they upcycle beautifully. I usually paint them but I'm going to do a different twist on this one and we're going to do some bleaching and try to lighten up this wood and just make it look like it's more modern. First job is to pull out all of this yucky material. These actually come out really easy. I just use a scraper and it's just lightly glued in there and you can just peel it away. It's a little bit of a job, but it's so worth it in the end. 
Sometimes you can save the inside of these jewelry boxes, but most of the time when I find them, they've been really well loved and they're usually really dirty. So I just like to take it right out. I don't usually see jewelry boxes this big. So when I saw this one with all the little drawers and the little slide out piece on the bottom, I knew I had to grab it. Now, once we get all the big pieces of the paper out, it's a big mess here. Bear with me because it's worth it in the end. What you want to do is you want to spray it with a little bit of water because there's glue and paper that's going to be left in the bottom. And once you get it wet and let the water soak right through, you can scrape away that paper really easy and then you have a nice clean drawer to work with. Okay, big job, but I got it all done. And now I'm just gonna take a sanding block. This is just a 220 sanding block, and I'm going to clean out the inside wherever there was paper, because you're gonna have little bits and pieces here. And I'm also gonna take off all of the hardware. There was lots of hinges and knobs. The knobs just pop out, and the hinges, you just need a really tiny screwdriver. I have a little glass dish that I saved them all in, because those screws are so small, and I didn't wanna lose any of them. Once I had all of those off, I'm taking my 220 sandpaper and I want to sand the whole thing until it takes off that top layer of varnish. Once we have that top layer of varnish off, when we apply the bleach, it will be able to penetrate into the wood. I've taken my spray bottle and I've mixed a solution of 50% bleach and 50% water. You want to make sure you do this in a well ventilated area and you're not doing it somewhere where it's going to make a really big mess. I'm just doing it in my shed with the door open. You want to thoroughly soak that wood and let that bleach soak in and it's going to lighten it as we let it sit and do its magic. Now it's already starting to work. This has been a couple hours and it is dried and I'm just taking a sanding block again and just doing a light sanding. And then I'm gonna spritz it again with that bleach and water mixture until I get the color of the wood that I'm looking for. And I'm just gonna keep repeating this process, letting it completely dry in between until I like the color. And this took three applications of the bleach and water once I got the color that I was looking for, I rinsed it all really well in water to neutralize the bleach. I really like the color that I was able to pull from this. It almost has like a sun bleached look. Now I want to line the bottoms of the drawers and the back of the jewelry box. And I found this beautiful scrapbooking paper at uh, Michael's and I picked it up and that's what I'm going to use. I'm gonna measure the drawers in the back and then cut the paper with my paper cutter. I've got them all cut out and now I'm gonna decoupage them on with my Mod Podge mat. You're just going to put a little bit in the bottom of each drawer and then just put the scrapbooking paper on top and it'll adhere really well and look how beautiful this looks. Now I have to come clean about what happened here. I put all of my hinges and my knobs in that little glass dish with a little bit of Javex and water thinking I would only leave it for about five minutes and it would clean them all up and I forgot about them and this is the next day and they had already started to go rusty but actually I don't mind it I kind of like the look that it gave and it gave it kind of that rusty aged look Everything is all put back together now. I've taken it out to my shed and I'm gonna give it a spray of this matte clear polyacrylic sealer. And I'm doing it on top of the paper too. I don't like using Mod Podge as a top coat. I like using the polyacrylic sealer. So here is the before. Remember the ugly orange paper that was really dirty and lined in all of those drawers and that orange stain that I really don't like and this is how I upcycled it. I love bleaching wood and the effect that it can give. Now, one thing I did find with these jewelry boxes is I realized they're not all made with the same type of wood throughout the jewelry box. So some of it lifted in different colors, but I like the variation that it gave. 
So if you see one of these jewelry boxes when you're out thrifting, grab it and give this technique a try. Hope you enjoyed today's upcycle. And if you like this content, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Old cutting board. It had some sort of a painted stencil or graphic on it that was really worn down and looked like it had been well loved. So I am going to give it a upcycle. I'm going to really aggressively sand off that graphic and it actually was kind of hard to get off because the ink had really soaked into the wood. Used my 80 grit sandpaper and a little bit of time and patience and I got it all off. When I'm doing a graphic transfer onto raw wood, I like to use my polyacrylic sealer. So that's what we're going to do on this project. I have this graphic of grandma's apple pie and I'm going to apply it to the cutting board with some polyacrylic sealer. I'm gonna set it aside, I've let it dry. It doesn't take as long as in Mod Podge, just takes a couple hours. So it's all dry now, I'm gonna dampen the paper and rub it off and we're gonna be left with this really cute graphic on this cutting board. I'm gonna seal it up with my matte clear polyacrylic sealer and it'll be ready to display in my kitchen. Now the reason I use the polyacrylic sealer method with this is I find the Mod Podge, it shows a bit on raw wood where this blends in better and you don't have that outline of the Mod Podge when you do that type of a transfer. Love the way that this turned out. You could do up one of your favorite recipes and apply it to a cutting board. Such an easy DIY. This would also be perfect to do up for a gift and use one of your favorite recipes to share with a friend or a loved one. Next project, I found this wicker basket, probably was for magazines at one point, for $2 at a yard sale. It's in really good shape, but not liking the brown color. I've taken it outside and I'm giving it a really good coat of this yellow spray paint. I am going to transform this to go into my craft room and I was originally going to upcycle this to keep cookie sheets and muffin tins, but I have a better idea. I love fun, whimsical colors in my craft room and this is what I upcycled this for. It's gonna hold my vinyl for my Cricut, scrapbooking papers, it's a great little basket to keep everything in one place. I always love when I find these galvanized buckets and pails, always pick them up because I love to upcycle them. And when I do find them and I upcycle them, they're probably one of my best sellers. And I think this bucket was probably an old water jug. It's not in the greatest shape, so that's why I'm going to upcycle it. If I do find these and they still have really good bones and they have a beautiful graphic on them, I don't touch them, but this one needed some TLC. I'm gonna put a graphic on using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. This graphic's available in my Etsy store. If you want to do a project like this for yourself, you can head over there after this video and check it out. I'm also not going to paint this. I love the patina of the red on the top and I love the metal color of the bottom. Now when you're doing anything that's really ribbed, when you put your graphic on, you wanna press that paper right into the rib of your project or when you go to remove your graphic, you're not going to have a really good transfer because you're gonna lose all of that lettering in between the ribs. So really work it carefully into that project. I've let this dry overnight and I'm just taking a damp rag with a little bit of water on it, dampening the paper till it can just start to see the graphic show through and rubbing off all of that paper. Now doing a transfer method on a ribbed surface like this can prove to be a little bit tricky, but if you just take your time and just slowly rub the paper away, you can have a beautiful looking graphic on your project and it'll definitely be worth the effort. I like to just do small sections at a time, just slowly rubbing the paper away. This is never a perfect transfer. You're always gonna have bits and pieces that are gonna rub off, but I think it just gives it character. Sealed everything up with a polyacrylic sealer and it's ready to put a plant in or some fresh flowers and display on your porch or your deck or even in your home. This is a little bit of an upcycle, something that I'd love to do if I find these faux flowers at the thrift store, I always pick them up, especially if they're really lifelike. And a lot of the times they're in baskets that are really ugly. I don't like the handles on them. And this is how easy it is to remove the handle. 
just cut it with a pair of side cutters and usually those bits and pieces will come right out and you're just left with a round basket without the handle and it doesn't look as dated. We are going to upcycle these salt and pepper shakers. Always see these at the thrift store. Next time you see one, you're gonna to wanna to pick up a set after you see how I'm going to upcycle this. Now these are some curtain hooks that I had that I actually tried to rust. If you didn't see my rust video, you can check that out afterwards. It was kind of a bust, but I did have some things that worked really well and rusted these curtain rings were one of them. Now I've just spray painted these salt and pepper shakers just with some matte white spray paint. And now I'm just, while it's still tacky, rolling it in dirt. I'm trying to make these salt and pepper shakers look like stone or like cement. So I'm gonna do a couple different layers of colors and put a little bit of the clear coat on, then I'm gonna rub in a bit more dirt, then I'm going to put on some more white spray paint, just kind of layering until I get that stone look. Now this is gonna look worse before it looks better, but I love incorporating that dirt or that sand into this because it just gives it that texture that we want to make this look more authentic. Just layering up a little bit of white spray paint, letting that dry, maybe rubbing on a little bit more dirt, putting on a little bit of the clear coat, and then putting on a little bit of the black, just until you like the look of it. That's what I am trying to achieve, is like that marble stone look. I've got them all finished. I like the way that it looks, and now I've got some old rusty wire. I'm gonna cut two pieces the exact same length, and they are going to be attached to these little claws off of those curtain rings. Hang tight, because when you see this all put together, you're going to love it. I'm just gonna cut that claw off of that curtain ring, and then we're going to glue it onto that piece of wire. And I'm gonna make two of them, one for each salt and pepper shaker. I'm using my super glue from Gorilla, it works fantastic, and it bonds metal to metal really well. I'm gonna place that wire exactly where I want it, put the glue down, and then set it aside and let it dry completely. They're completely dry now, and we are going to put those right in the top of that salt and pepper shaker. And this is what I created, a beautiful spot to put some vintage looking photos or a little piece of artwork and display in your home. And you can use more than one piece of wire and put in multiple um, photos into these little salt and pepper shakers. I love this idea. I hope you've enjoyed all of today's upcycles. I'd love to know down in the comments which one. The first thing you're gonna need to do is grab some oven cleaner. I actually found this at our dollar store. It was $4 and I used this container for all four of these projects. I have a frame that's been decoupaged on. I have a little trinket box, a picture frame, and these candlesticks. They're all really dated looking, covered in a lot of varnish, and we're going to put this Easy Off oven cleaner to the test and see if it'll break through the surface of all of these projects. Of course, I'm doing this outside. You wanna be in a well-ventilated area, making sure you wear a mask, glasses, and gloves. I sprayed the oven cleaner on all of these projects really liberally, let it sit for 20 minutes, and now I'm taking a scrub brush and just scrubbing at it. And as you can see, a lot of it is already lifting off. I put them all in a pail and I'm just using my pressure washer on a low setting. You can also use a garden hose and I let it soak for a few minutes and now I'm going back in again with my scrub brush and you can see how it's lifting that first layer off and it's also soaked into that decoupaged print and it's coming off that plaque also. Having that orange stain and that thick varnish just screams 80s so this is really going to update these pieces. I've set these up again on the crate and the pail to give them another coat, spraying it on really liberally and we're gonna set it aside and let it sit again for 20 more minutes. After that 20 minutes was up, we went back in with that scrub brush again and really aggressively scrubbed at all of those projects and you can still see there's a lot of that stain and varnish that's still coming off. Also use my scraper a little bit to help it along. Okay, the first project that we're going to finish up are these candlestick holders. I was blown away 
I was able to get almost everything off of these right back to the raw wood. I let it dry overnight and now I'm just going in with a little bit of sandpaper and just cleaning up around the grooves and the edges just to smooth it out a little bit. I can't believe how well that oven cleaner broke through that really thick varnish and stain and removed it all. So here's the before and here is the after. They look high end. Love the way they turned out. I didn't even put anything on them because I love that raw wood look. Kind of gives me that pure one kind of vibes. Put some candles in them. These are going in my house. What is this little plaque? It was a little bit more stubborn. After three coats of the oven cleaner, this is as far as I could get it uh, lifted. So I went at it with a 120 grit sandpaper and it didn't take much to sand this right back down to the raw wood. And I'm gonna turn it into a sign. We're gonna use our label sheet technique with polyacrylic sealer. I have a full tutorial on how to do this transfer technique and it works really well on raw wood. We're using our polyacrylic sealer matte finish and I'm going to put a coat on top of that piece of wood and then we're going to lay that label sheet that I've printed on with my laser jet printer right into that polyacrylic sealer. Making sure it's centered and have it exactly where we want it. I set it aside and let it dry for a few hours. And then once it's completely dry, all you do is just remove that label sheet and you've got graphics on your project. So we've taken this plaque that had this decoupaged, probably greeting card on it and upcycled it into this beautiful little plaque that I am going to hang in my craft room. project that we worked on was this wooden frame and it had some really intricate cuts in it and I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to get that cleaned out in there. I was really surprised it worked really well and it came up nice and clean. I'm going to turn this into a sign. I cut a piece of MDF and I've painted it with some homemade chalk paint and we're going to do our Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method on this. Printed out these graphics on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text. This graphic's available in my Etsy store if you want to grab it. I'll have the link down below in the description and you can check that out. I've let it set for 24 hours and now I'm just taking a damp rag with some water, wetting it till you can just start to see the graphics show through and then taking off the paper. You can peel it off if you can get it to peel and then go back in with your fingers and rub all of the paper away until it's nice and clean. And then I'm going to seal it with some polyacrylic sealer and we're ready to put it in the frame. So here's the before with that ugly orange dated stain and this is what we upcycled it to. Cleaned up really nice, gave it a really rustic look and then when I added that sign in the middle it finished it off perfectly. And now here's that little trinket box and I'm pretty sure it was cedar. It came up beautiful. I sanded it down with some 120 grit sandpaper and now I'm going to seal it up with some matte polyacrylic sealer. So here's the before, really ugly, really orange and this is what I was able to upcycle it into. A perfect little box to keep some earrings and necklaces and little keepsakes. Old rusty stuff always dragging it home, but now my stash is getting too big. So I'm gonna put some DIYs together with some of the stuff that I've gathered along the way. And before I get started, I like to seal everything with my matte polyacrylic sealer. To hold everything together, I'm using my E6000 and a little bit of hot glue from my glue gun to keep it all solid and bonded really well. Some have said they don't like to use the E6000 and the hot glue together, that it doesn't work really well. I've never had any issues, so I always use it together because then I can move it around without worrying of it tipping over before it really bonds together. This old hinge is so beautiful. The rusted patina on it is fantastic, and I'm going to add it to the front of that rusty loaf pan. This video is going to show you that you can take any type of junk, anything that you would think would just be garbage and turn it into something beautiful. All of this stuff was discarded and when I have it all put together, it's so gorgeous and it would look beautiful in an old farmhouse kitchen or living room to display maybe a plant or some little knickknacks. So here's my before of all of my crap and here is what I've created. I 
had this old grater that I picked up at the thrift store and then I rusted it with some peroxide and salt and water. It turned out fantastic. I'm gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. Just add this little clamp on the top. I printed off one of my farmhouse graphics that I coffee stained, clipped it on the front, put a full flower in the middle. How easy is this? And I think it's really pretty. Next project, I had an old rusty horseshoe and this block of wood. The wood was already painted with some black homemade chalk paint. So I'm putting some white homemade chalk paint on top. We're gonna set it aside and let it dry. And then once it dries, I'm going to really aggressively sand it. And then I printed off this graphic that I made. This is perfect for the horse lovers. I'm going to use my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method, putting a light coat of the Mod Podge all over that graphic that I printed off on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text. This is available in my Etsy store if you wanna grab this graphic and make a project like this for yourself. I'll put the link down below in the description. I'm gonna place it exactly where I want it, making sure I'm getting out all of the bubbles and wrinkles, and then we're gonna set it aside until tomorrow. It's the next day and I've dampened the paper with a little bit of water, rubbing it off all the paper, and then I'm gonna seal it up with some water-based polyacrylic sealer. If you don't have any polyacrylic sealer, you can also seal up your signs with some Mod Podge. Went into my stash, I found some nails, and I'm just gonna nail that horseshoe right onto that sign. And this is the before, and this is what I created. A whole bunch of rusty nails. I don't know why I always keep piles of these. I keep them in a glass jar because I know eventually I'm gonna get around to making a project with them. Today's the day. I've just gathered a whole bunch that are all the same size and I had a little glass jar that I painted with some white chalk paint and I'm just gonna hot glue them all the way around that whole jar. I was so happy to use up a bunch of these and create something beautiful out of it. So this is the before. And this is what I created. Who doesn't love rusty hinges and an old door pull? I'm gonna put this together and this is gonna be really fun. I have this old scrap piece of wood. I think I'd actually put a little bit of sand paint on it. I'm gonna add some turquoise acrylic paint on, paint it over the entire top of the surface, let it dry, and then I'm going to scrape away at it and sand it, and I'm gonna create this really great chippy piece of wood to make my project on. Nothing better than taking a brand new piece of wood and making it look old and chippy and vintage just with a little painting technique. I screwed the hinge and that pull onto the board, making sure the hinge was right at the edge. So I am now going to use my Gorilla Glue and I want to make sure that hinge is not gonna flap back and forth. So I'm just adding a little bit of it into that hinge so it'll stay put. Now the screws were not the same color now, so I had a little bit of acrylic paint. I dabbed it on and it actually was almost the same color. Worked perfect. Gonna dab that on, let it dry, and then I'm gonna take my engine enamel and give everything a really good coat because we want this to be really durable. So I've taken all of this crap and this is what I've turned it into. A cell phone holder, it's also great for business cards. And I dragged this old toolbox home because I couldn't leave it in the scrap metal bin. The, it's really dirty, but the patina on it is fantastic and I don't want to paint over it. I wanna make sure that I can preserve all of this color. I took it outside and I gave it a really good scrubbing with some soap and water, sprayed it all down so it was nice and clean. Once I had it completely clean and all scrubbed, I set it out in the sun and let it dry really well. I think originally it was probably this green color, but it's just gorgeous now. All of that patina of the rust and the green and the different colors, I wanted to preserve it. So once it was completely dry, I sealed it up with some engine enamel. That's gonna make it really durable, but it's also gonna seal it and it won't rust anymore. 
I took it outside and gave it a really good coat over the entire toolbox, inside and out. And as I'm spraying it on, you can see all those colors even pop even more. So this is gorgeous now. You can put a plant in it. You can keep your tools in it in the tool shed, or you can just display it as is. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So worth dragging it home. simple easy DIY. I have all kinds of mason jar lids that are rusty and I'm trying to use them up. This turned out really beautiful. I'm going to glue it all together with my super glue from Gorilla Glue. Sometimes you just don't think about things. You just throw it together and in the end it turns out gorgeous. This was the before and this is what I created and I think it looks really primitive now and I love the rusty mason jar lid on it. Absolutely perfect. another rusty loaf pan. This one's going to turn into a little basket. I had this little handle, not even sure where it came from. It was in my stash and some rusty wire. I'm going to drill a hole in each end of that loaf pan and then we're going to string that wire through that little handle and attach it onto the loaf pan. If you have any little metal bits when you're drilling through this, just take a little bit of sandpaper and that will sand it down and then you won't catch your fingers on it if it's rough. Then I'm going to seal everything up with my matte polyacrylic sealer and then attach it all. And I've taken that rusty loaf pan and turned it into a really cute little basket. So don't overlook all those rusty bits and pieces that you have or you see out and about. Just get some creativity going and you can create some beautiful home decor. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you love this video, I'm sure you'll love either of these next two. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.